Okay, everybody, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. As I said before, make sure you're muted as I go through the, the um, PowerPoint presentation. If you'll make sure you put your name in the chat area. And also, if you'll wait to the very end of the presentation for any questions, I'm happy to answer anything that you have. So welcome to everybody. It was great seeing so many parents and children attend the child orientation this morning. Uh, I, we had such a great attendance. I think we had all but one family there today. So that was probably the best that we've ever had. So it, it was great seeing everybody. The children look so big and they've grown up so much. It's going to be a really good year. Um, I always like to start out with something for Mr. Rogers because I, I love Mr. Rogers. Fred is like, I didn't really know as much about him in my early part of my career as I do now. And uh, so I tried to find something that he said that might be inspirational for us as we start the school year. Our job in life is to help people realize how rare and valuable each one of us really is, that each of us has something that no one else has or ever will have, something inside that is unique to all time. It is our job to encourage each other to discover that uniqueness and to provide ways of developing its expression. And I feel like that sums up what we try to do at our school each and every day with your children, making them understand how unique they are and how valuable they are to us. As you know, we're accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children. So what that assures you is that there will be lower staff-child ratios, smaller group sizes, um, but what happens in order for us to be successful at accreditation and to what makes our school uh, really sets us apart from other schools is the combination of the teachers, parents, and administrators that work together so that we can provide the high quality that we have at the school. Um, each of you, uh, you got your bags, that we provide the children and inside, either inside those bags or you were given them by the teachers was this parent handbook. So the things that I'm talking about today are just the highlights. Anytime you have a question, um, I try to put as much information in that parent handbook as possible. So this is what it looks like and make sure that you have a chance to go through it and read it in a little bit more detail should have everything and probably more that you never wanted to know in that handbook. All right, let's get to the basics. Um, coronavirus is still with us. Um, uh, with the meeting of the APLC board in August, uh, we went through what we were going to be doing for the beginning of the school year. So, and I sent out a letter and also an email. So I'm hoping that everybody got that information, um, but I'm just gonna run through it real quickly. Uh, there'll be uh, hand sanitizing stations at the main entrance. When you drop off, the children can use it. They are not required to use it. And I will explain that by saying that the first thing the children do when they get into their classroom is wash their hands. So they can do the hand sanitizer or not, or you can use it after you drop them off and you want to, it, it's just for your convenience. Um, at the end of the day, parents will pick up their children from the classroom. Um, but anytime for right now, as long as a parent walks in the building, they must have a mask on. Uh, today at the uh, child orientation, there were several parents that didn't have a mask and I had some, but I am going to tell you, I'm not gonna spend a lot of money always having masks for people. You, you just need to remember. Uh, that policy of having parents wear a mask in the, in the building will be revisited every month at the board meeting. We will decide, you know, given um, what the coronavirus is doing, uh, 
or the COVID-19 and all that stuff, we'll revisit that and decide if we're gonna keep doing that. And we will do as we have been doing for the last two years and we're disinfecting all the time, doorknobs, uh, tables, everything uh, to keep your children as safe as possible. Um, this is just for your own information. If uh, we have confirmed cases of, of COVID, it doesn't mean that we are going to close a classroom. Um, a child will be will self quarantine for five days. When they come back, they'll have to wear a mask for five days in the in the program. This is pretty much standard with the new uh, CDC policies that came out um, very recently. So I just sort of, that's what we're gonna follow. Um, if I will be very transparent with you, if we have cases in the classroom, I will let you know. It will be up to you whether you wanna send your child uh, there or not. And if we have over half of the classroom, we may consider closing that classroom and doing some deep cleaning. Uh, knock on wood, I can tell you that we have been very um, lucky. We haven't had many cases of COVID and I've only had to close one class down. That was last year. So um, we're, I'm hopeful if we do all the things that we know we're supposed to do, that we will be free as much as we can be. But it's up to you as parents, if your, your children are sick, that you don't send them to school, um, you get them tested. And we will, of course, as I said, be very transparent with you about what we find with uh, if parents call me. Um, <clears throat> As I said before, all the classes, last year we, we used two different entrances, but this year we are only using the main entrance to drop children off. We will um, be you know, scanning their barcode, bringing them in. Teachers are gonna come down from their classrooms uh, to pick up the children and take them to their classroom. Um, so you know, explain to your child what's gonna happen so that they, you know, you're not explaining and trying to say long goodbyes there at the door. Um, just tell them that you'll be back to pick them up and you'll pick them up from their classroom. Um, this is kind of a, a nice combination of allowing you to be in our class, uh, in the building at the end of the day, and it allows you the opportunity to visit with the teacher and, uh, you know, see how your child's doing. In order to minimize too much crowding in the hallways, they are gonna, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, they are going to be uh, asking you to come in one entrance and go out the other entrance. Each of the classrooms have uh, two doors. So that way you'll be, you know, it'll be a, a good flow and there won't be a lot of parents <laughs> in the hallway, because we have kind of narrow hallways. Um, the tuition payments, y'all have paid tuition for September, and some of you still may owe some money for a supply fee. As I said in our letter that I sent out in uh, July and, and gave that information to other parents that signed up after that, Due to the money that we received from the Texas Workforce Commission, we have used some of that to give you a credit, $100 a month from September through December. Uh, starting in January, it will that $100 will be added back onto your tuition, but at least for these months, we're able to break Here. on your tuition. So we're pretty happy that we are able to do that. There is a, a tuition payment card that is in your folder, so it'll remind you of what you owe. And Allie uh, in the office is happy to tell you if you owe anything, um, but we're pretty set up. I, most parents have asked, and uh, but there's lots of ways for you to pay. As I say on here, there's checks, electronic checks, cash or credit card. Uh, I discourage credit card payments only because you have to pay an extra 3%. So um, 
if you have any other questions about that, just give us a call. Um, sometime between now and, and the next couple of weeks, if the teachers haven't already asked you to, they're gonna be, I have a, a class list that has all the information that you put in when you did the online forms. So I'm asking you to just check and make sure it's correct because that is the information that we're gonna put in the directory. Uh, we don't share that information with anybody. The only people who get that directory are people that are enrolled in the school. So I, I, if you don't want certain information on there, um, uh, there was a place that said you didn't want your information, but I encourage you <coughs> to at least let us put your child's name perhaps your name on there. We don't have to do an address or a phone number if you don't want. But if, you're, if you checked that you didn't want uh, that information in the directory, it will look like you don't, you're not even in the class. So, you know, for birthdays and all that kind of stuff, it's just, uh, you know, it's convenient for other parents when they get that. So I'll be checking to see if anybody did that. But in the meantime, and I'll give you a call and we can discuss it. Um, your child needs to be at school by nine. We don't officially start the school until 9.15, but uh, you are able to drop your child off before then. Uh, and if they are sick, it's really, can, uh, it's a good idea to let us know, especially if it's more than one day, we wanna make sure there isn't anything we need to let other parents know about, um, you know, strep throat or something, you know, stomach bug or any of those kinds of things. And I do send that out when I know about that. We go by Northeast School District calendar. So in your directory that you get, there will be uh, the new calendar. The only uh, difference is uh, we start, uh, obviously we didn't start when they started this year and we will end a little bit before they end. But any other uh, holidays that they have, uh, we will share those holidays. Um, we do have parent conferences one time in the fall and one time in the spring. And so that will be an additional day. And we've let you know uh, in the directory, there will be another calendar. You can check our calendar on our website. So there's lots of ways for you to kind of set up your calendar. Uh, these are our program fees and those will be in the back of your uh, parent handbook as well. Um, so you will see what you will have to be, these are the fees you'll pay starting in January, the $100 off is reflected here. This is the pink card that you have inside your folder. So it'll tell you exactly how much you owe. If you forget and you're not sure, you have a reference card. There it's, and it's pink, everybody's is pink. Um, as you come in to pick up your child at the end of the day, um, look at our bulletin board across from the day school office. We have some good ideas for snacks and lunches. Um, Right now, uh, your child's gonna be excited to be at school. They won't care what you're sending, but they are, um, after a while you may get tired. And so you may want some other ideas about what to send. Um, right now we don't, we are lucky enough not to have any peanut allergies in any of the classrooms. So, uh, but there are some other allergies and the, the teachers will let you know if there's anything that you can't send. We do ask that you don't send any foods that require heating or refrigeration. That's what the bulletin board looks like, but it's similar. Just put some good ideas. You'd be surprised. And if we see things that like, uh, maybe your child sees somebody else eating something and it looks good to them, the teacher may write a note and say, they think they might wanna try that because you never know. It's, you know, all that peer pressure that we have, they'll, they may try something new that you don't think about. Um, this communication that we have is we do a lot of email. So I need for you to really check your email every week. We have parent communicators that send information to you. 
I send out a school-wide email once a month as, and the teachers do a newsletter as well that's uh, just for their class. Um, you'll pass by an e a whiteboard and easel every day if we have any important uh, information we need to you know, give you, you're gonna check that. Um, the, there's a hard, we do give you a hard copy of the monthly calendar so you can put it on your refrigerator or just keep it somewhere handy. Um, all of these things are, are important, but that checking your email, because right now we're, we're not using a lot of, we're not using text. When you get to elementary school, we're kind of setting you up because some of them use text, but mo more uh, often they use email. So if you don't get information, you're not checking your email. The, uh, it's, I can't stress that enough because uh, people come in to me and they say, well, I didn't know about some activity at school and it's because they're not reading my newsletters. Uh, and so if there's anything I can do to help you with that, let me know. We have chapel twice a week, once a week for each class. So the fours class uh, will go on Tuesdays with the threes class and then threes will go on Wednesday for those that are attending on Wednesday. Chapel is very interactive. They learn to sing and to sign. Uh, they have a puppet show once a month, a Bible story each time that they go. And 99% of the time there's a pastor there. Uh, and that's where we celebrate birthdays. So we, you are invited to donate a book. We have books for purchase in the day school office. Um, and we sing happy birthday at chapel. So uh, that it's, it's just really fun. The kids enjoy it. And uh, you will be contacted when it's near time for your child's birthday. And you'll be invited to attend. Uh, in the past, for a long time now, we haven't been able to invite a lot of parents to chapel, but now you are able to come back and enjoy chapel. We, one of the good things that came out of COVID was that we started doing chapel outside. And uh, we're going to continue doing that unless the weather's bad and our uh, puppet shows are always held in the sanctuary because of the puppet theater. Uh, if you have a birthday parties you want to celebrate with uh, the children in the class, we're happy to distribute those invitations as long as every child is invited. Um, let's see. And if you have your child has a summer birthday and you want it celebrated in chapel, maybe before we get out of school, if you'll just contact Mrs. Kleinert, then we can make that happen. We <clears throat> the two parent conferences that we'll have this year are November 9th, which is a Wednesday, or May 2nd, which is a Tuesday. So school will be closed on those two days. But if you have any concerns or if we need to visit with you about anything that we're concerned about, then we'll be uh, contacting you and you can co contact us. We use an assessment system called Teaching Strategies Gold. And it's an online system. So we take hundreds of pictures. We take, we are assessing your child with the activities that we have in the classroom. The teachers change out their rooms uh, every month and they're looking at your child and determining what activities they can put that will allow them to see where they are or help them with a certain skill. So you will learn more about that at the first conference. Um, if you, all of you have done the online forms, uh, but if anything changes, uh, telephone number, uh, employment, um, you have another child, all of those things, you can go back on there and update those forms for us. That way we keep them up to date all the time. How can you help? Well, you got a volunteer parent volunteer sheet. It had all the different ways that you can help. We have in uh, specifically 
Um, there's a basket coordinator. We have a silent auction every year. And uh, we ask parents to make donations for a basket. And I need somebody who will come up with a theme for each class, you know, one, one person in each class, uh, collect items from parents. Uh, I help you with that. The other uh, way for the silent auction is we have a class project coordinator. We try to do a class project that uh, all the, child, the children are involved in and then we auction it off. Those are very popular items, I will tell you. Uh, if you wanna be on the APLC board, we meet once a month. Uh, it's the first Thursday of every month, right after drop-off and they, the meetings last about an hour maybe less. And the last thing is we would like to have a librarian. We didn't do this last year, but we've done it in years past where we have a library with lots of books and the children get to check it out and then they bring it back in. Teaches a lot of responsibility. If this is something that you might like to do, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about being our librarian. The kids love it. Our parent communicators for this year are in the pre-K-2 class is Elise Lakeland, whose Blaze is her little boy in the class. Clemence uh, Rowland, whose Madden Mayfield is her little girl in the pre-K-3 class. And the pre-K-5 is Laurel Allenstein. And Jillian is her little girl. So you will re be receiving emails the first email is like a test to make sure that you've gotten all the inf you know the email and that your uh the email she put in is correct um so be looking for that sometime in the next week or so um but they'll they'll be sending you information that is specific to your class reminders they put in there about when tuition is due um, any school-wide events, all of those things. And as the silent auction comes up, there, those emails are even more important. Uh, so be looking for an email from them. We will have uh, a couple of fundraisers this year, as we do every year. Um, before COVID, we had Greenback Night. We had everybody come up to the, to the school um, we haven't had that for a couple of years. And instead, we had what we called a day at the museum where we collected artwork that the children have done from September through into November, and we displayed it. And you could make a, a donation. Um, that day at the museum was very uh, important because you were not able to come into the building. So I'm really happy that we're kind of coming part way where at least you can come in and you'll be able to look at all the artwork and ask, see the classroom, see the things that they're doing, uh, because it's really hard. Pictures are not always good enough. And seeing all of the things that they're doing and the wonderful creativeness that comes from those classrooms sometimes is best only seen in person. So that, uh, the day at the museum or greenback night, whatever the board decides that we're gonna do is going to be sometime November 1st through the 3rd of this year. The silent auction will be uh, the week, it will be online auction and that will be March 21st through the 24th. Uh, in the past with the silent auction, we've had a family night, but I don't know that we're gonna do that again. That'll be a board decision as well, but we will have an online silent auction. These are some of the class projects that we have done. Each child, uh, this was in the fourth class, the picture on the right, um, each child decorated their own heart. And we had, you know, uh, we framed it and they had their picture on the back. It's just, we tried, sometimes the simplest things are, the, are most effective. And, you know, I could see that in a um, playroom or a child's bedroom. Uh, so we've done a number of things and I have lots of pictures. If you decide that that's something you would like to help us with. This is also from when we had in-house, but the class baskets, we did 
uh, Lego baskets, everybody donated something, a Lego toy, you know, that they could put together. Others, we've had margarita baskets, we've had all kinds of things and they are very popular. Okay, let's move on to health and safety. If, if your child is ill, like I said, um, please let us know and they have to be symptom free for 24 hours before they can come back to school. So remember if they leave the class, if they come, let's just say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Tuesday, they go home sick with a fever, they can't come back the next day. They would have to wait until Thursday um, and have be symptom free for 24 hours. Um, we have uh, the doors, the main door that you will come in is closed from 9.30 to 1.30 every day. If anybody wants, and it's locked, if anybody wants to come in, then uh, there's a camera, they have to ring the doorbell. I can see who it is out there and I can let them in. We also have intercom, intercom system in every classroom. Um, if somebody other than yourself comes to pick up your child, um, it's best to let us know either by email or you can call. Um, but they need to be, if it's gonna be on a regular basis, you need to add them to your emergency form. Uh, they have to show an ID if it's somebody other than yourself. And even if a dad comes that we don't know, have never seen, we're gonna ask for an ID. We will make a copy of that and we'll give that copy to you and then, or to the person that is picking up your child. That way they know, uh, the teacher knows that uh, they are authorized to take your child. So, um, just make sure I know you email me or, you know, you let us know what's going on so that we can, uh, I've only had one time where I've had somebody show up and they didn't have, there was, they weren't on the list and I didn't give them that child. And, uh, I'm not going to take that chance that it's somebody other than who they, who should be picking up that child. Uh, we keep the children's files and portfolios in locked areas. The children's files are in my office. Um, and we only allow access to any of the files that you, any of the information that you give us to licensing representatives. They uh, <clears throat> will sometimes, you know, about every other time that they come, want to look at the children's files to make sure that we have all the information and, and they have their, um, you know, medical forms and immunizations. Uh, if we have an NAYC assessor visit, sometimes they look, but, um, and of course the staff, uh, if they need to check emails or information that you've given us about your child. We have fire drills every single month. We have severe weather drills and uh, lockdown drills quarterly. So we, uh, in fact, we had training in the summertime for lockdowns. So we feel pretty good about what we're putting in place to keep your child safe. Uh, the severe weather drills, the children go into the hallway and they put their heads down and we talk about it being, having to be safe away from windows. The fire drills, we go to the outdoor chapel area. Uh, and the lockdown drills, we will be moving your child practice moving out of the building if somebody is not, uh, there's someone that um, her, you know, presents a danger to your children inside the building. Uh, in the case of evacuation, if a child, if we can't go back into the building, we are scheduled to move the children any way possible to get them to Coker Elementary. Um, we will, every time the teachers go outside, whether it's the playground, chapel, anytime they move outside the, the classroom, they carry emergency forms you, that you have filled out. So we have all your information. So uh, it's just a regular thing so that you will be contacted from that emergency form. Um, and of course, you know, any emergency personnel, 
will contact if we have to. Finally, after school, you are welcome to play on the playground, the large playground, uh, but you'll have to wait till 2.15. The teachers, uh, we set up the playground every day with uh, curriculum and we have to put all of it away before we can have your children um, play on the playground. It is extremely necessary that you supervise your children at all times out on the playground. I have found over the years, and I've been here for over 30 years, so I can tell you that children decide that what they can't do during school is something really fun to do after school. So standing on tables and jumping off and climbing up on the roof of the house out there is not permitted. It's not, it's not safe. So we have posted guidelines about that for you. But with our new turf out there, it's gonna, it's very attractive. And I know they'll have a good time out there. Um, if you'll check out our website and, and like us on Facebook, that would be uh, fantastic. I try to keep the website updated with different activities and uh, that's where you can pay your tuition and uh, should have everything that you need about us. Uh, Sarah Wilcox, Miles' mom in the pre-K uh, five class has graciously agreed to chair teacher appreciation this year. So you're gonna receive at the beginning of uh, probably in the next week or so a letter. And we ask parents to make donations to cater our lunch for the teachers. And Sarah will be heading that up along with a couple of people who have offered to help. So uh, when they have their conferences, they have a lunch provided for them once in the fall and then again in the spring. So um, that, the teachers really appreciate that. And it's, you know, you know, as teachers, they never get to go out anywhere. So it, it's big when they have this. So what I need from you are these three things, just to turn in your parent volunteer form, uh, check your email address and your address and phone number for the directory. Um, I, I wanna make sure that it's all correct before I put it out. So are there any questions? Now's your time. Anybody? I can't be that good, guys. I'm not sure if we had any questions in the chat or not. Okay, if that you don't have any questions, I'm I have an open door policy. I really anytime you'll be going right by my office to pick up your child and if you have any questions, I am there. And I can, I'm happy to, um, you know, give you advice if you are having problems or, you know, with your child or, you know, it's what I do, it's what my passion is. So uh, if I can be of help anytime, please come by. Okay, well, let's have a good year, you guys. Oh. Thanks. Thank you. There's a question in the chat. There, there is a question in the chat, yes. Okay, what is it? Can you tell me what it is? I can't see it. It says, Francis, are we able to bring our other children in with us to the classroom for afternoon pickup? Yes. No problem. But I, I will tell you this, if you're, uh, if you have a baby and they're in a carrier, we are happy to look after that little baby in the office so that you don't have to carry that baby down the hallway. In fact, we like it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can do that, no problem. Really quick, that would also apply when you're volunteering as well? Uh, yeah, in the, <clears throat> if you are volunteering like reading a secret reader or something like that, yeah, you can leave them in the office. No problem. Uh, the only time, that siblings are, are not as welcome as if we happen to go on a field trip. We don't 
have siblings go on field trips. Anything else? There's nothing else on the chat. All right. Well, let's have a good year, you guys, and please come and talk to me if you need to. Thank you. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.